seen the movie, um, uh, oh, Greatest Showman. Anybody seen Greatest Showman? Greatest show in the world, right? Love Greatest Showman. You seen it? Yes. So the story ends, right, with, with them realizing that we don't need a building because our building got burned down. We don't need a building. We just need a tent. And so they move. So Barnum moves his circus to a tent. And so they have these huge canvas tents where they have these circuses. <clears throat> and and they, they had this dilemma where they were like, you know what, the problem is these tents are brilliant because they're, they're, they're portable, we can take them down, we can move them, you know, they're inexpensive. The problem is that when it rains, the canvas gets drenched and then the tents get really, really, really heavy and they tend to collapse or it drips on all of the people inside and it turns out people don't like that. So they're like, well, what do we do? What do we, how can we make these, this canvas waterproof? So they're like, well, what repels water? And uh, somebody had the idea that kerosene, kerosene will repel water. So we should soak our canvas tents in kerosene because that makes sense. And so that's what they did. They took all their canvas and they soaked them in these huge vats of kerosene. And then they put the tents back up and guess what happened when it rained? All the water just slopped right off. Well, but now you have this canvas tent soaked with kerosene. Well, I don't know if you know this, but what they used to do, and, or what I, they might still do this today, but the way they would train elephants, these elephants, for the circus is they buy, or they, they go out into the wild and they capture these elephants when they're really, really little. And uh, they would tie a chain around the elephant's ankle and tie the chain to a metal post and they would drive that post, that metal post deep into the ground. And then they would leave and the little elephant would be like, I'm free, I'm free, because no one's around. And so they would tug and they would tug and they would yank and they can't get away. And they would do that until their leg is bloody and it hurts to pull away. And so they stop trying to pull away. Well, as soon as they stop trying, the trainer comes out and they replace the metal shackle with a rope a thick rope and they tie that rope to instead of a metal post they tie it to a wooden post and then they drive it down into the ground so the elephant looks down and they're like oh something has changed and so they, they they struggle but they don't pull nearly as hard because their ankle is bloody and sore and so they try and they try and then they're like i ah, still am stuck well they reduce the size of the rope they reduce the size of the peg until finally a fully trained elephant you just walk up and you tie a rope around their ankle and you set it on the ground and they're like, can't move. And so in the early, I think it was 1950s, there was a big circus fire in uh, Germany, I think it was, in a Barn and Bailey circus tent. And one of these big kerosene uh, tents caught on fire and everybody got out all right, even all the animals, except for six fully trained elephants who just had a rope tied around their ankle and the entire tent burned down around them and killed those six fully trained elephants. Now it's interesting because we have these in our lives. We have, we manufacture these identities, these perspectives about what we can do and what we can't do. And these become these self-imposed limitations. And it's not <clears throat> that we're actually stuck. But it's that we have tried and we have tried and then we failed and then we have stopped trying and it's called learned helplessness. And there are probably categories like this in your life, things that you suffer from, things that you fail to accomplish because you believe that you cannot. 